Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to have another look at Krita. We've looked at this application in the past, and uh, Krita is a good... It, it, it differs from GIMP in that GIMP is more like layered image manipulation versus Krita is a little bit more like a drawing tool, although both of them have a very significant amount of overlap. The biggest reason I have not used Krita in the past is their, their uh, layer handling of text was horrendous. And this is an issue they've always known about. They were open about it, like, yeah, we're, we're, we're working on it. It was a little bit lower priority for them for a while because, again, they're more of a, an animation, a drawing tool. If you have, a, like, a Wacom tablet, this is the application you want to use. It is excellent for those types of things. And so with this... Uh, they did actually end up fixing the text layers. It might have actually been about a year ago or so. So this is, uh, I'm just now getting around to it. But if you're unaware of Krita, it is a KDE application uh, because, you know, everything starting with K. I think they have a monopoly, right? Everything starting with K has got to be a KDE application. Is there an exception? Uh, but it is cross-platform. Again, it is a uh, full professional, which it is very professional, open source painting program. Uh, but it has things like layer properties, which GIMP does not have. And um, there's a few other things that make it a very good tool, particularly for artists. Not as much for thumbnail creation and things like that that uh, we're going to look at here today. It is also cross-platform, uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. And apparently they have the first notarized Mac OS build of Krita. That's probably because this new uh, crazy finagled um, Mac OS is pushing more people away. Like, why are these companies doing this? And then they're pushing it back and forth between... It, it's. Like, people jump between Mac and Windows, and Mac and Windows, Mac and Windows. Guys, come over to Linux. Just come on over to Linux. It's kind of like uh, watching people uh, church jump in my town. They'll go, they'll rotate between. I've been in the town long enough. You'll, everyone's have tried out all of the five major churches. There's 80 churches in this town. Find a good one. <laughs> you know? But anyway, you can get it from the Steam store or the Windows store. Um... You can get the total source codes. You can get some older versions. There's Windows Shell stuff there. Uh, here is the app image. There is an Ubuntu PPA because the one in the Ubuntu repositories is ancient. We have a flat pack, and uh, here's a special thing for Gentoo. If you ever wanted to know that Gentoo is crazy, look at this. Even in the Gentoo script, it's bloody, man. It's a bloody mess medicine with Gentoo. Never mind. No, no, no. Come on. We're just being cute. All right. Um... But anyway, uh, this is where you can grab Krita from. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to load this up in a virtual box. So I installed this on my my uh, Linux Mint 19. I forget if it still says 19.1, but I think we're actually up to 19.2 at this point. We're going to jump on over to Mint, and uh, we are going to have a look at what this is going to look like. Okay, so here we are on Linux Mint, and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to use Krita to build a thumbnail. Yeah, I know, I said that this is not necessarily designed more for thumbnails as much as for animation stuff, but still, we want to show that this is actually a very good application to use. And so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and just boot up Krita, and I installed this with the Flatpak just because that's is going to give me the newest version, 4.2.7.1, as opposed to the ancient version that is in the repository. So when we first land on the application, this is the screen that we have. We see we have a lot of cool brush presets. There's the brush history. Of course, there's nothing there. Um, and then the various tools. Um, I don't think um, path, uh, maybe there's some pens there. All right, there they are. I uh, wasn't sure about those, but uh, just saw them. So let's go ahead and create a new file, and uh, we're going to go ahead and just create a uh, just create a thumbnail. So we're going to start out by starting with new, and I like to create my thumbnails at 1600 by 900. So of course we already have that set. If those are not correct, go ahead and set those. Resolution for a uh, digital image uh, for like a website, things like that, 72 DPI is what you want. If you're doing print, you want 300. Also check out your mode. You have a lot of different modes here. Uh, certainly a lot more than GIMP has. So if you're doing print, you want to do CMYK. If you're doing something screen, you want to do RGB. Of course, the difference is RGB is emitting lights through red, green, and blue pixels. CMYK is trans or, uh, reflecting light off of a printed medium. So we definitely want to do RGB at this point. So when we get this guy started here, we can just roll in the size and zoom it just by rolling the mouse wheel 
We do have the ability here to grab this guy if we need to move the picture around. I think there's another way to do that as well. Uh, holding the, uh, let me see. Yeah, just holding the center mouse wheel down also gives us the ability to do that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and start with uh, creating a thumbnail in the general way that I would create my thumbnail. So the first thing we want to do is I like starting with a big yellow background. So I'm going to grab my um, fill auto uh, full fill bu bucket here, and then I need to change my color. Right now it's black. I don't really want that, or maybe I actually do. Let's go ahead and uh, keep a black layer down there, and then let's go ahead and just add a new paint layer on top of it. This paint layer, I want to add a color to it, my yellow color. So I'm just going to come up here to the tool up at the top and click on the button up here and I can enter my hexadecimal color for the yellow I use, which is F0D514. Push OK, you'll see it selected yellow and now we have our yellow. Now the thing that prevented me from using Krita in the past is the tool function uh, for text was not good. Uh, it has made a lot of headway lately. And so here we have selected it. Now we can't just click it somewhere like we can in Photoshop or GIMP. We have to create some type of outline. So let's just go ahead and create an outline like this. And uh, now we have this. We're going to go ahead and do our title. So let's just call this the uh, Our New Thumb Title. Let's do this. Now Inside of this, we can select a variety of things. So if we want to center it, we can center it there. Uh, if we want to change the color. So of course, I usually use a black text for this one here. And of course, I usually use, um, you can select the font or you can just double click over here. And just type the font the size that you want. Okay, now when you hit save, it's going to automatically save those. I'm going to highlight that. That was one of the clunky parts. There we are. So now hit save and uh, you'll see that uh, it has given us the text. Of course, it's moved itself. So let's just grab our move tool and move this guy down where we want to be. Now, I've not found a spot. I'm sure it might be here somewhere. I've not found a spot to center this layer over this layer. That's something I use all the time in GIMP. It might be here. If you know where that is uh, without me hunting for it, let me know in the comments down below. I'd appreciate it. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and eyeball it for now. We're just kind of getting a basic feel. Now what I like to do is I like to erase my uh, everything that's not on my title part. Actually, I don't like my uh, font there, so let's go ahead and uh, we need to grab our text tool and select the layer that we have here. And then just double click anywhere on the layer and it should give us back our tool here. So let's go ahead and change our font. And I usually use some type of sans. I don't use sans serif, just sans. Sometimes I'll use my bold, sometimes I'll not. So I can test both of them and see how they look. Let's go ahead and use our bold, but cut our size down to 100. Let's do that. So that looks pretty good. That's what I want. So I close, re-grab our move tool, and just uh, re-center it just by our eye. And now we're going to come down here to our select tool and select my yellow layer. And I like to get rid of everything that is not part of the title. So now since we added the black on the bottom, now I have my yellow and I have my black. Now, what do we want to do now is we want to add my logo, which is something I like to always do. So I grabbed my logo here, dropped it onto this, and I have the options to install as a new layer, as a new file layer, and a new document, insert of as a reference. So we're going to do as a new layer. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's on the top. Grabbing my move tool, let's deselect everything there, and I can drag this around. Now this is much bigger than I want. So what we want to do is resize this layer. So with our layer there, we go down to our select layer and then transform scale layer to new size. And I like using 350 for this. Of course, I can constrain the proportions or not. So this is actually the size that I like my logo to be. All right, let's go ahead and grab another image. Uh, just grab something from, uh, let's do Pexels, which is a good uh, public domain image repository. And we'll just kind of grab something from the front page. Uh, let's go, yeah, this, let's go with this one today. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's go with this one. 
So we're going to copy the image. Let's see if this will work, if I can paste it in. Okay, so I hit the uh, uh, Control and V for paste. We have options here. It says it can't match the color profile just because it's coming from the web. So let's just paste it in as a web. So this is what it gave me. Let's go ahead and uh, check with our layer size here. Scale layer to new size. Let's do my 1600. And you'll notice that the height is a little bit higher. That's okay. Um, so I can see here how much it's sticking over. Um, I like to snap this to the grid. So let's go ahead and uh, snap to and grid. And that should make sure I have a nice hard boundary there. Let's move this under our yellow layer. So there's what we have. So it does look like Krita is now a viable option to do my thumbnails. Um, obviously this is not what it's specifically designed to do, but nevertheless it is still a good application for doing these. Now, for those people that have really liked Photoshop and complain that GIMP does not have layer properties, this is where Krita is going to stand out. So this is my text layer here. This actually has layer properties. So hit your layer styles and you'll notice that it has all the same layer styles that you are used to. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of a stroke. Um, I don't, let's do it solid red. Let's just go with a It's a very bright red, but let's go with it anyway. All right. This is massive, so let's cut this down. Let's go with 2 pixels there. And you can see that now we have a nice stroke and then maybe you want to add a drop shadow. Kind of roll it in, give it a second to get itself updated. Oop. Let's go ahead and do something that's clearly, obviously, a shadow. And let's go ahead and give it a, some type of tint to it as well. Should hopefully update. Eh, it's a little bit too light to see. See what that does. Okay, so there we have an obvious shadow there. We can bevel it and emboss it if we want to do that. So we can kind of see what we have. It doesn't look good on black text, but this is just for the purpose of example. Now the advantage that this has is these are non-destructive edits. This is something that GIMP has always been lacking. So if I want to come over here and let's see our new let's say our new thumbnail and get rid of the word title. Hit save. Now you can see that it's going to adjust accordingly. And that's awesome. I'm not sure why I switched myself to bold italic, but you know, let's just go back to bold. So you can see now that we actually have the ability Interesting. It keeps going back to bold italic. I have no idea why it keeps going back to bold italic. This is the first time I've ever seen it do this. It also went back to um, there we are. I must have just hit the italic button. That's probably what it is. Okay, so there we are. So now we have created our new thumbnail. We have centered our text. Uh, everything is actually working the way that I wanted to. Now again, Krita is generally more for animation type stuff, not quite as much for thumbnail -y type stuff, but you can see that it is actually produces very nice, very robust work uh, with a lot of the look and the feel that Photoshop has. So uh, if you are looking for something that you can use very much like, uh, like Photoshop with layer properties, things like that, Krita might be your good way to go. Uh, again, the thing that, that uh, really caused a nightmare before was the text and that you could actually drag and redrop these and uh, that's really what the problem was. But now they pretty much have that fixed, so this is now becoming a good option. So uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below.